Hello everyone, and welcome to this seventh edition of Carlson Power Tools in under 10 minutes. I'm your host, Gary Rosen. I'm the Regional Sales Director for Canada for Carlson, even though I live in New Hampshire. Some people know me as Professor Landnut from my training and consulting days prior to joining Carlson. And there's a few people who just remember me as the bass player who sat in on that famous party at Club 54 at the MGM. <laughs> But that's a different story. Um, for those of you that have seen previous videos, I appreciate it. I hope they've been useful. Welcome back. And for those of you that have not seen any previous videos, welcome aboard. I hope this is useful. The theme for this episode of Power Tools is the idea of repurposing a power tool that you've used traditionally for other things. Like you take your drill, electric drill, you put a special attachment on and you stir your paint with it. Or you take an old, hopefully an old electric toothbrush, and you find an old brush and you use it to put the polish on your shoes, polish your shoes with it. That's great for that. Um, this is repurposing of a power tool that uh, was not designed necessarily for that, but darn, it works really well. Carlson SiteNet has been in Civil, Carlson Civil, for probably a dozen years. I've used it extensively. I love it. It's one of my favorite power tools. Its primary design and purpose was to do volume calculations between existing conditions and proposed design surfaces and works great for that. Um, uh, it's just a fantastic thing. But what I was thinking uh, when I was getting ready to do this one is, well, what if we revisit it and look at it in a different way? So in Carlson, of, I don't know how many thousands of times I and probably many of you have built surfaces and we always use triangulate and contour. So we go triangulate and contour and it's awesome. You know, we've got the triangulate tab with its settings. There's how many there, a couple dozen. The contour tab with its settings and the labels tab with its settings and the selection tab with its settings. And it's very useful and there's all kinds of tools in there. And again, I've used it to build every surface I've done pretty much uh, for the most part. And it's great, not saying not to use it. You can still use your power drill to put screws in. Um, but there's another tool called SiteNet. And um, if we look at it in a different way, uh, could could be interesting. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a data set here. I'm gonna first of all draw uh, a point group. Okay, so I've divide, uh, designed a point group specifically for the, the topo. Um, I've eliminated the shots that I don't want to use. Inverts of pipes, tops of hydrants, etc, etc. So this is another, could do another power tool on this, maybe I will. Um, but you make a point group that contains all the points that you want to use for your surface. And, and of course, does not contain the ones you do not want to use. So we have a point group, we draw the point group on the screen. And uh, on a bit of a side note, I'm drawing these uh, at zero elevation. That was it by point defaults, where it says uh, locate on real Z, and I said no. So here they are, they're drawn in, they're all at zero. If I do my drawing inspector, uh, we can kind of confirm that just to be sure. It's just kind of interesting. Uh, it, it's not critical, it's an interesting side note that they do not have to be in 3D um, just get those uh, elevations to show a little better. They don't have to be in the drawing at their real Z to, to basically be used uh, as, as data. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink wrap. I'm going to say draw, shrink wrap, another power tool. Uh, if you're not familiar with, you should get to know. We're just going to tell it to shrink wrap these entities and give me a, a, an outside boundary uh, that I can work with. Now I can edit that. For this example, I'm not going to. And basically, I'm going to jump into SiteNet, and I'm going to say all these points were drawn on one layer. Now, again, you may use one, you may use multiple. It doesn't matter. In this case, it's one layer. It's PNTS. I'm going to say take the PNTS layer and move it to the layer group called existing. And what I'm telling the software is any geometry that you find on this layer or any other layers that I specify, I want you to use those to build a surface with a single mouse click. That's the key to the whole thing, okay? So I save and I exit and I have to define a boundary. SiteNet needs a boundary. So we're just gonna pick this shrink wrap boundary. And then what I do 
with nothing up my sleeve, because uh, I have a t-shirt on, um, I say, make existing ground surface, and I pick, and it says, done. One mouse click. Now, what I've done to show you is I say, view, 3D view, surface file, and I say, well, let's look at the original ground, and here it is in our 3D viewer, and that's what we just built. And we built that with a single mouse click, and I think that's worth noting. So looking around, our surface looks pretty good at first glance. We can move the light source around to kind of get a better view. But what we see, one thing we see is right in here, I know there's a road through here, but it didn't model correctly. And what's that due to? Of course, missing brake lines. So let's figure out what's going on here. You figure out that there's edge of pave shots through here and they were not brake lines. So you go through the exercise and you put in the brake lines. I'll just thaw the layer I already did. There they are. Now, what do you have to do in SiteNet? You come back, you go to your list of layers that are not being used, and you say, EP, Edge of Pave Break Lines, move to the existing layer set. And then all you have to do is a, a single mouse click. It rebuilds the surface. If we look at our viewer, and we look at our surface here, and we right click and reload it, you immediately see the road up here. Okay, get the idea? Now let's say there's other brake lines we need to add, like center lines. So I'll scoot my viewer out of the way to my other screen. We'll go to our layer list, and I have a center line brake line layer that I already put together. Okay, there it is in green. So what do I need to do in SiteNet? You see, I just come in and I say find the center line brake line layer and move it to the existing layer group. That's all I got to do. And then all I do is say, make existing. One mouse click, it rebuilds the surface. Let's take a look. Come in here, zoom up a little, right click, reload. And there is now you can see, kind of, kind of move the light source maybe to see it clearly, but we now have a crown on the road. See there, the crown of the road. That came from, of course, from the center line, brake line, etc. You continue to do this and add data edit data, whatever you do in your normal surface modeling routines. But what you do when you want to see the results is you pick a single mouse click and say, and it's done. Now you can also view stuff. In the view, uh, SiteNet's viewing control, I'm showing the existing utilities, the drawing, uh, existing utilities, the drawing entities that are for existing, I want to turn on the existing contours. And of course, the contours have settings that I can adjust, but I'm just going to take the defaults and I can see the existing contours just like I would, I would need to do. And I can see, in fact, how the contours are coming right down the road. So there's visual displays as well. Um, there's lots of tools here you can use. And of course, the ultimate goal in SiteNet is to make a second surface and get your volume calculations. But what I wanted to bring to your attention today as an idea is to build your existing condition surface from your survey, from your brake lines, uh, potentially from other sources, um, consider SiteNet as a way to go. You don't have all the options, but maybe you don't need all the options. You'll have to experiment and see. Uh, see what you think, give it a try. Uh, let us know. Get back to me. Uh, you can always email me, grosen at Carlson SW, like software or Sierra Whiskey, um, dot com. Uh, put comments there. Get a conversation going. Uh, I hope this was useful. Hope it's an idea that may be worth considering. Uh, if not, thanks for your time. And uh, we'll see you uh, next time. Take care and have a great spring. It's March here in New Hampshire, so we say we're almost halfway through winter. Uh, but anyway, it is starting to warm up. So I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a great year. Hang in there and do good work and, uh, and uh, stay in touch. Take care.